You know, it'd be helpful if these guys have a sign. They say like 15 seconds, because I'll I'll get to the pitch. <laughs> uh, you know, I can get to the pitch. Yes. Don't worry. Right. Just stay on top. All right. All right. All right. I'm trying. Okay, this, is still, this is still good. Yeah. That bell's from the 1920s. I bet. Yeah. Oh, no. Actually, there is. And they'll last another hundred years. There we go. That's right. Made in America. Made in America. This is this is another economic question that's specific to Van Ness. Okay. Many seniors who live in Venice want to stay in Venice. Are there obstacles to creating senior housing? And if so, what will you do to create senior housing in Venice as opposed to a public housing? <coughs> well, good question. Most seniors need affordable housing. Because if we start building luxury senior housing, that's not really going to serve a population <laughs> on a limited income. Uh, zoning is part of it, and I'll be honest, I, I tow a hard line on zoning, and we're going to need to make some compromises in order to get the senior housing. Now, and I know uh, Mr. Simitelli speaks about this a lot, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Ortiz is very compassionate uh, on this issue as well. I am not opposed to rezoning an area to get senior housing or get a dense senior housing building so long as the residents of that area get a preference and priority who live in that area to apply. Then I'm not opposed, but it has to serve people who live in the area. It's got to truly be affordable, and I can get to another time why a lot of these things aren't. But those are the criteria we need to meet. Because listen, we have city we on City Island we have Pilot Cove. It's 202 low senior income housing, and we have Middletown Plaza over in Pelham Bay, great facility. I think my friend here would agree with me. Uh, and we also have Schley Balcom over on the other side of the district. Those are our affordable housing. And let me tell you something. It's either, it's either Pilot Cove or Middletown Plaza. Many of these seniors, before they die and go to heaven, that's their stop-off point. That's where they want to go. And I will tell you, when I worked for Senator Klein, many seniors, a lot of them from Van Ness, I would have a list as long as my arm. All those seniors, widows on Social Security, were getting priced out of the neighborhood. We need to build more housing. But again, these developers are not going to build it for a profit. We need to bring in the federal government. We need to have a 202 program. Frankly, what we need to do is do a land bank of all the city's own land, and the city owns a lot of land, guys. I hate breaking to you. Look into maybe that, that the MTA lot over here, if we can deck over that, and do a large capacity senior housing. <laughs> One ring. That's pretty good for me. You've got to admit. I'm getting better. <laughs> Appreciate that too. I look into the audience. Many of you are seniors. The inflation rate has gone up. Right? My son is 21 years old. When I first had him 21 years ago, a one bedroom studio apartment was five, six hundred bucks. Remember that? Yeah. 21 years later, that same one bedroom apartment is worth $1,200. How can, a, how can a, 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 a veteran, a senior, that retired 21 years ago, getting a, an income from the pension at $1,500, afford an apartment? at the inflation rate 21 years later. Let's be real. So when we look at some of these subsidized programs that some of our colleagues are against, fought against, we got to think about what we're saying. Instead of regulating what's going on and making sure that there ain't abuses, we got to make sure that the money from DHS programs, from the federal, from HUD, from the state and the local areas go to where they should go to our seniors, to our veterans first, the, to women that are victims of domestic violence, and other and people who are sick, and make sure that that money is there. Because in reality, in another 20 years, and, and we're getting healthier as human beings, right? We're not gonna be able to, to afford the inflation rate in another 10, 15 years. The rate for a one bedroom apartment could double, $2,400. It's creeping there. Let's be real. So when we attack rent subsidized programs, we've got to think about what we're attacking. When John 9 is taking people to the courts, you got to be careful what the judge may render as a decision because once they render the decision, it becomes law. And then you have to appeal the law in order to change the verdict that it is. And sometimes we take people to court to set a president, and then when we set a president, the brokers and the real estate brokers, they, like, the spiders jump on them. Thank you. Think about what I'm saying. Vote for Victor R. Ortiz.
Last night uh, we were at a debate, AARP, and I raised the issue about uh, senior Social Security benefits. 2016, I pulled out my $5, you got your $5 increase, right? Big deal. The city council gave themselves $36,000 raise. They gave the seniors $5 raise. The year before, you got zero. Although the trust fund this year for 2018, they project it's going to be 2.2, which averages about $50 increase, $45 to $50 increase for every senior citizen. Most seniors make between $1,200 and $1,400. It's not a lot of money. Look at this facility here. I've been advocating for years. I've been advocating against supportive housing. Because people that work their whole lives, people that raise families, deserve an opportunity to live in a building like this. Not because I'm heartless, and I've been accused of being heartless, because I don't want to give drug dealers, ex-convicts, pedophiles, people that should be in institutions, housing. Before we deny, before we deny seniors housing. So, if people believe I'm heartless, fine. I'm here for the people. People that deserve it, people that have earned it. And I think they should have every opportunity. We need more senior housing. We have so many different programs. Two or two program, we even have Section 8 designed for the elderly. I believe this one is Section 8 designed for the elderly, according to their income. Which is, right? Thank you. I thought I'd, I looked at it years ago, but no, it still, is. still is. So we have opportunities here we need to build. Unfortunately, the developers want to build for supportive housing because it's a cluster site. You bring in 50 people, you bring additional services, doctors, psychiatrists, social workers, everyone eats. You know, they eat off the misery. La miseria, you know? So this is what the issue is. Senior citizen housing. Very important. Thank you. Right now, everybody, I'd like to please introduce our uh, uh, Marjorie Velasquez, uh, our candidate. Um, and I'll ask Marjorie that if, if we, you guys, Bernadette is speaking, so we need everybody to be quiet. One person has the floor. Okay, um, Marjorie, what we had asked before was um, originally, and you get one minute, and then one and a half. Well, no, this is the original, the original question that we had asked is, um, um, who are you and what qualifies you to represent the people of the Bronx 13th City Council District? So that's, you get one minute to, as we asked everyone else, you get one minute for that, since okay. you came in. Thank you. So, good evening everyone. My name is Marjorie Velasquez. I am a proud, proud Democrat running here in District 13 for City Council, currently held by Council Member Jimmy Baca, who has endorsed me, and this is because of my story. This is because of our story. This is because we are all made of this strong fabric that has united our community for so long. See, my parents came in from Puerto Rico, barely any funds, barely any English, and fought hard through sheer grit and determination to give me and my siblings a life they couldn't have over there. And what that meant is going to the best public schools, going to St. Catharines Academy for high school, and ended up at NYU where I took up accounting and finance. This led to a career at DirecTV where I managed around uh, 16 different uh, books for um, DirecTV in many different Latin American countries. And what that means is that professional experience is what I want to bring into the city council. Someone who understands budgets, who can enforce budgets, and really hold these agencies accountable. And what we're looking at is actually my life, my time there got cut short. I had two really serious accidents uh, back in 2012. And it really put me in a place where I never had been. It's vulnerable, um, it's dealing with this healthcare bureaucracy, all that red tape. And it's hard, and it was a struggle. But what was worse is actually, here I am, bilingual, having the best access, you know, two lawyers, two doctors, and guess what? I was still stuck in that. And people that were with me 
or Lon Sainte had problems even greater than I did. And it's giving them a voice, it's fighting for them, and that's why I joined the community board, I'm the treasurer of the area now, it's community board 10. It's running for democratic district leader, I am that at 82 bar B, and what it is, it's giving everyone a fighting voice, a fighting chance, and that's what I, my story is about, and that's what I'm here to do. It's to unite us all, that cloth that we are all caught out of, Keep it going, keep it going strong. And I'm here to represent you and ask you for your vote. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to add Margaret, we're going to ask you, everybody has answered, and the question here was an economic question. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yes. Are we going to go over all the questions? No. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Are we going to keep on moving forward? We're keeping moving forward. No. Okay. No, no, no. I was just since. You came in with that question, I'm just going to oh, allow it. No, 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 that would not be nice. <laughs> I think everybody would just kill over. <laughs> okay, um, the economic question is, uh, many seniors who live in Van Ness want to stay in Van Ness. Are there obstacles to creating senior housing? And if so, what will you do to create senior housing in Van Ness? Sure, um, thank you for that. Uh, for me, the, the biggest uh, obstacle is the influence and the overdevelopment that we have that does not include our community boards, that does not include the community as a whole. I'm very, very proud of the efforts of Community Board 10, of the ad hoc committee that they have for overdevelopment. The chair's here with us now. Her name's Irene Guanel. And you know what? It involves everyone. It's just not the community board. It involves business. Uh, leaders, it involves civic leaders, because that's what this community is about. And that's why we have to have more of these within the city council, within our district. And it's about giving the community board more authority. If it doesn't work for us, it's not going to work out at all. It's before the shovel hits the ground, giving everyone a voice, letting everyone have an opportunity to hold these developers accountable. That's what I uh, did with a petition at 10800 Rucker Boulevard, where um, a developer came in and tried to do a whole bunch of stuff that we still, to this day, don't even know what he wants to do. But we hold him accountable and make sure that the, the, we hold the, the fire to his feet. We know that you're not going to do anything without involving us first. And that's what we keep, have to do. And that's why I'm a fighter. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Next question. I think this is our last question for the evening. Okay, you ready? Okay, New York City based hosts on Airbnb and other short term rental websites would be required to disclose their exact addresses under legislation announced Tuesday, July 18, 2017, by New York Democratic Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal. Currently, addresses are only revealed to a guest once he or she books a rental. The law would impact hosts in multi-unit buildings. Where do you stand on Linda Rosenthal's <coughs> bill regarding Airbnb? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, oh, no, go first. Okay. You want Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to go first, Marjorie, or do you want to take a break? So just to read, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so just to read, go over this question time. again, is where do I fall into Airbnb, and should we disclose the location publicly or before booking? Right. Should it be available? I mean, I think the biggest challenge that we have to our housing crisis right now is that these are apartments that actually can be rented out. And that's where we really need to hold landlords accountable because you can't make money off our backs again. Here we go. You know, here's an opportunity where you can take the incentive and give these apartments and rent them out to families that need them. We are in a housing crisis and taking the opportunity to rent them out to families and not make so much money off our backs. You know, short-term rentals have so many implications. It's, you have these transient people coming in. You don't know where they're coming from. You're not doing the background check. And you, they're going to come in, stay a week, stay however long they want to, and you, how do you hold them accountable? You know, and it's making sure that we do identify them, and I am not a fan of Airbnb because of that. So I do agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, Ms. Rosenthal's bill is dead on arrival. Who is she kidding? She's pandering to her base. Fine. It, the bill is not going to go anywhere. The speaker doesn't want it. 
She knows it's dead. It's fine. We see it in the newspapers. It makes a nice headline. Everybody's happy. You know, three months later, not everyone forgets about it. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a problem with the uh, rentals. Uh, basically, they're illegal. I think they are illegal. They're able to skirt the loophole, the law, and that's the problem. Um, I think the law needs to be changed. Um, I think Albany could make, have an impact on this. Uh, since we're not getting any response from the city, Albany could pass legislation, could be lobbied. I will, as elected official, if it doesn't get passed, we have a crazy speaker, she's a communist, and she got a mayor's a communist, we got two communists in, in, in down there. <laughs> You know, at least, at least if we had a balance, it would be great. At least if there's a check and balance. We don't even have that, unfortunately. So um, I, I think that's the problem. And uh, if we don't get any satisfaction in the, in the city council, I think Albany could pass legislation imposed on the city. And I think that's an option. We have to start thinking outside the box. Uh, we have plenty of uh, state assembly people that represent us in the, in the Bronx. We have here two assembly people. We have one state senator. Um, even though, I must say, even those bills up there, they do it, and and you see them in the front page of the Bronx Times, and everybody's saying, what a great job. Meantime, they're dead on arrival also. I think if they pass one or two bills a year, they're lucky. Everyone forgets besides reading the Bronx Times. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Doyle. You still get a closing statement, right? Well, wait, uh, there is going to be one more question okay. after this. That was not the last question. Thank you, Egidio, for that spirited performance, as always. I, sometimes I think it's a Joseph McCarthy over here when he's going on. But uh, he's a good man and a good friend, and I wish him well. Um, listen, unfortunately, Egidio touched on something that's very true. Well, a lot of the housing laws were, were outsourced to Albany because the city, again, the landlords bought the state legislators and they realized, you know, if we have a local government controlling these things and the local people are, are dealing with this, it's going to be harder for us to pass this. So let's pass it at the state level and then we can funnel all this money to these upstate legislators who don't give it. You know what, I'm not going to curse. Uh, you know what about tenants down in New York City? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's crazy how many upstate uh, Republicans, they happen to be Republicans, get money from the landlord lobby in the city and the charter schools of the city to promote their interests upstate because they're not looking out for us and they don't have to answer to constituencies when they vote the other way. So that's really the problem that Jidio was kind of touching on is that we need all the local um, rent regulations, housing regula regulations, land use regulations brought back down to a city level because that's the most local level of government. It shouldn't be being dealt with in the state. It should be dealt with at the city level. That way you know what's going on. We're not obfuscating things. As it relates to the bill, uh, because it isn't a state level bill, we wouldn't have a direct say, but I would be open to passing a home rule measure based on how you describe it, not having read the legislation, to support something like that. Because Marjorie's already mentioned the housing units going off the market, which I am too am very concerned about. But I'm also concerned about the quality of life. I'm concerned about what happened north on the parkway at Fenton Lounge. That guy, rented out that place as a party play, pa palace and would have hundreds of people there. It wasn't zoned for that. It was all done online through Airbnb. He had cameras in all the rooms. God knows what he caught on those cameras. I don't want to even go there. Uh, it was a disaster. And the people who lived around there, they had loud nights where they couldn't get to sleep. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to all you guys who are here. For, furthermore, I, as has been touched on before, when you have Airbnb, they stay in a co-op there's no vetting going on. They get in through secured buildings. It's a total sham, and it needs to be regulated. It needs to be reinforced. And finally, we need to pass things like the Bowdy House Bill to cut down on crime, because frankly, these landlords, as long as they get in the rent check, they will look the other way. Mm -hmm. On drug dealing, on illegal industries going on, on Airbnb, on a lot more. Thank you. I, I, get, I get a minute to respond to that joke of Mark. Okay. I gotta say, I'm entitled to it. it was a joke. I apologize. I, I gotta, I have to make at least a minute to respond okay. to it. I, I did just, I know it was a joke and it was, it was a thing, but I just want to clarify the air. Thank you I for giving me an extra minute. I don't think he's McCarthy, but I'm happy you get another minute. I, at least he gave me another minute. Am I a conservative candidate in the Democratic Party? Yes, I am. I'm a union Democrat. I've been a union Democrat. My father was a union member. My mother was a union member. Um, 
We were all conservative. Were we Democrats? Yes. That's where I want to see the party, the Democratic Party, go. We lost Washington this year. We lost because we have too many of the progressive ideologies that have taken over our party. I have two battles. One battle is my own people and my own party with these ideologies that are progressive and not applicable. They're not real. They're a fairy tale. And unfortunately, this is why we need to bring back the Democratic Party to its base for the working families, for the working people, for the unions. I'm still a teamster, by the way, in good standing. So I just want to let you know, uh, am I conservative? Yes, and I'm proud of it. And I'm proud to be a union Democrat working for our working class community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, no, you didn't. Is that still that? The studio definitely is an is an intellectual capitalism, very creative and imaginative. All right, let's say let's get down to the point. I think uh, Governor Cuomo, any 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 legislation, any legislation that comes across, I think Governor Cuomo's um table is going to be doing it when it comes to Airbnb. He's against it, and I think he banned it in, in New York State. The problem is that with Airbnb, the company in itself, and I'm answering your question, right? They don't have to disclose who they're renting out to. The same way DHS doesn't have to disclose to the community board when they're going to sublease to a non-for-profit to build a homeless shelter. There's loopholes. The same way if Mark Jonan's case goes to the courts and the judge decides against the people of the city of New York, the relatives will take advantage. You have to read between the lines, ladies and gentlemen. So be careful on who we put into office on September 12th. Because <coughs> the fine line is that they may provide legislation that is against the community. And they're telling you here that they're going to do it. So, as far as Airbnb, since there is no disclosure, there's no regulation. As your next city councilman, I will propose city council legislation to prevent Airbnb to do business in the city of the Bronx, especially in the city of, the, of, the, of New York. We need people that can legislate. Ladies and gentlemen, I said in one of the first hearings, I mean uh, meetings, that Mark John I is a great person, but he never passed a piece of legislation in five years. I remember that. Remember that? I vouch for you. In five years, he's my brother and I love him, but he hasn't passed a piece of legislation in Albany. Now you want to come down and you want to be my legislator. Can't be. Marjorie Velasquez started her petition with fraud. How can she be our next city councilman when she started with fraud? And her cohort over here, uh, sitting back here, that threw out Goldman says, now it's stuck in Florida, hopefully nothing happens to her. We need to be clear and concrete in what we do, ladies and gentlemen. And I thank you, Van Ness, for listening to me. And I apologize. Yeah, I fought the battle with you, and I beat you in court, buddy. Sorry, you lost. And I'm here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Why is he attacking Please forgive me. Please forgive me. No, I'm sorry. You got to forgive me because okay. people back there are just acting crazy. Okay. Yeah. I think crazy. And I apologize. Well, if Ms. Velasquez, you have an opportunity to respond Thank if you would like Ross Knight. Yeah, especially about the fraud. Stand in there a little bit longer. No fights. Okay. No. This is personal. I'm sorry. Don't bring the person over here. Let's hear what Ms. Velasquez says. So I have four siblings. I have two younger siblings. My parents always told me when a child has a temper tantrum, you let them cry. So that's how I'm doing you're a fraud. You're a fraud. You got a girl from Ohio to come out right here and do our petition, and she wasn't even a registered voter. You're a fraudulent human being. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's have respect here. I understand everybody has their right of opinion. It goes for the candidates also. Okay. Okay. So I don't want to be a parent, and I don't want to yell.